everyone. It's great to see you. It's great to see you if you're here with us uh, in the church. It's great to see you if you're on live stream. We can't see you, but we know you're there. And thanks so much for joining us. We are uh, looking forward to coming into God's presence. We're looking forward to meeting with him. We're looking forward to uh, having him meet with our needs as we come to him today. In fact, as we come to preach and share God's word, one of the things that we're most definitely talking about is how he is the one that makes the real difference in our lives. And of course, we know that to be true, and we celebrate that. Let's, uh, let's kick off our service today with a, a prayer, a psalm, um, particularly um, kind of relevant to what is still a new year. over the course of these 12 months. Father, we come before you now. We surrender our lives to you. We say, Lord, have your way in our lives. Your kingdom come, your will be done in 2021. We pray in Jesus' name, your, uh, your throne to be established in our lives, in our hearts, in our circumstances and situations. Help us to look to you. Uh, with a new vigour, uh, with a new enthusiasm, with a new passion, and with a new dream in our hearts. In Jesus' name, help us to meet with you in powerful ways. Uh, Lord, take us to another level, we pray, in this new year. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's worship together as uh, Steve leads us. want to remind you guys here, uh, in person, we can't sing. But we can use these words, we can use these worship songs to just enter into God's presence and to express our hearts of love to him, which is really what worship is all about. Thank you. 
Amen. Psalm 89 says, I will sing of the Lord's unfailing love forever. Young and old will hear of your faithfulness. Your unfailing love will last forever. Your faithfulness is, an, is as unending, sorry, is, is as enduring as the heavens. The Lord said, I've made a covenant with David, my chosen servant. I've sworn this oath to him. I will establish your descendants as kings forever and they will sit on your throne from now until eternity. You know that that's referring to Jesus, of course, don't you? All heaven will praise your great wonders, Lord. Myriads of angels will praise you for your faithfulness. For who in heaven can compare with the Lord? What mightiest angel is anything like the Lord? The highest angelic powers stand in awe of God. He is far more awesome than all who surround his throne. O Lord, God of heaven's armies, where is there anyone as mighty as you, O Lord? You are entirely faithful. You rule the oceans. You subdue their storm-tossed waves. You crush the great sea monster. You scatter your enemies with your mighty arm. The heavens are yours. The earth is yours. Everything in the world is yours. You created it all. You created north and south. Mount Tabor and Mount Hermon praise your name. Powerful is your arm. Strong is your hand. Your right hand is lifted high in glorious strength. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Unfailing love and truth walk before you as attendants. Happy are those who hear the joyful call to worship, for they will walk in the light of your presence, Lord. They rejoice all day long in your wonderful reputation. They exult in your righteousness. You are their glorious strength. It pleases you to make us strong. Yes, our protection comes from the Lord. And he, the Holy King of Israel, has given us our King. Amazing words. We serve a powerful, a mighty, and a glorious God. And he is with us today. Let's come and spend a little bit of time in prayer. Those of you who um, have been receiving the, um, the notice sheets... Um, will know that, uh, not the notice sheets, the prayer sheet rather, will know that uh, Wendy has now started sending through a, um, a prayer uh, diary for the week. And uh, those of you who were involved in the prayer consultation will also know that we, we, made, uh, we made the suggestion that we would like to increase the amount of prayer that actually happened inside our services, ever so slightly at least. Um, and, uh, and so I, I th thought today I'd combine the two. We would pray using the, uh, the things that Wendy has put down in the prayer sheet and join with prayer just briefly together now, praying for these issues um, before we then move on to a time of communion together. So let's pray. Very humble to see that today's prayer is for myself and Ness and Ellie and we appreciate your prayers um, and, uh, and then Monday we're praying for it's praying for the rest of the leadership team I'm going to combine those two together as we begin to pray through these weeks Father God we just want to thank you for your great love for your great power Lord we thank you for the truth of what we've read in that psalm just a moment ago um, we trust in your reputation. We stand in your mighty power. You truly are a glorious and wonderful God. And Father, we bring our request to you, knowing that you are an almighty God who is able to do so much more than we could ever ask you. You're able to do far more than we could ever uh, call on you to do. And you're willing to meet with us. And you're a God who hears our prayers. Father, we pray for the leadership team as, as a whole. Um, Lord, for those in ministry and uh, those in who, who, who serve in this capacity in our church, we bring them before you. Lord, they're named in this prayer diary. Myself, Ness, and Ellie, our daughter, and then John, Darren, Alan, Laura, and Sarah. Father, we pray in Jesus' name for your anointing upon them, 
for your protection upon them, that, Lord, you would give them the grace to lead, Lord God, effectively and in a way that brings glory to your name. We pray, Father God, for our Sunday services and our weekly meetings, um, the events, most of which happen online. Father, we just pray that you would break into those gatherings, Father God. Establish your plans and your purposes and meet the deepest needs of the people that are meeting. We pray as a church, as we approach this new year and we move forward, give us vision, give us direction, give us leading. Lord, take the things that we believe that you've put on our heart and anoint us to see them fulfilled and to see them established, we pray in Jesus' name. We, Father, we know that still uh, working within the restrictions of this pandemic, Lord God, it is, it is difficult sometimes to see a way forward. But Lord, you are the one that takes us on. Your word says that every day is new, Lord, and that your mercies are new every morning. So Father God, we look at this year ahead and we trust you to do great things because we, do, we know that you are able to do far more, as we've said already, than we could ever ask. We pray that there will be deep spiritual growth in our church, Father God. And we pray, Father God, that we would know you more and know you in a deeper way. We pray, Father God, as a church, for our health, for the, for the health of our families. Father God, protect us, Father God. Keep us safe, we ask. Put that hedge of protection around us so that we may do your will. Father, we pray um, for our support centre and our food bank and those volunteers that week by week do put themselves out, uh, Lord God, to serve the community when it would make, perhaps be much easier just to stay at home um, where it's safe. Father God, we pray for your blessing upon these two ministries, the support centre and the food bank. We pray for the lives that will be touched by them in Jesus' name, that they may see, Lord God, the love of God shining through every, uh, every piece of advice, for, uh, sh uh, every piece of help and every item of food in Jesus' name. We bring these before you, Lord, and as we continue to pray over these matters throughout the week, Lord, may you come and answer in mighty power. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Good to pray together, isn't it? We're just going to play another video and then move straight into a worship song um, as uh, we approach our time of communion. You are what we need Only you Do you see the way we fall And pick us up Could a broken love be offered
And we all Kings will surrender their crowns And worship Jesus For he is our love Unfailing share communion together. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he broke it, he said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this as often as you eat it, in remembrance of me. In the same way afterwards, he took the cup. But we'll come to that in a moment. <laughs> Let's take the bread together. Amen. In the same way afterwards he took the cup. And when he blessed it, he said, Take, drink. This is the blood, my blood shed in covenant and promise for you and all of those who will follow. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let's share it together. So we know that those words go on to say, For as often as you eat the bread, and drink the cup, we are proclaiming the Lord's death, and of course his resurrection, until the time when he comes again. Wonderful. Fantastic. Isn't it funny how you, um, you get into patterns of saying things? I started going straight into that, uh, in, into, the, into, the, bre into the, the cup when it was time to take the, take the bread. Never mind. 
still a wonderful thing to be sharing in those things. And we're going to come to God's Word next of all, if I can find it. Here we go. Yeah. Fantastic. If you want to read with me Luke chapter 5, verses 17 through to 26. Okay, it says, one day when Jesus was teaching, some Pharisees and teachers of religious law were sitting nearby. It seemed that these men had shown up from every village in all Galilee and Judea, as well as from Jerusalem, and the Lord's healing power was strongly with Jesus. Some men came carrying a paralysed man on a sleeping mat. They tried to take him inside to Jesus, but they couldn't reach him because of the crowd. So they went up onto the roof and took off some tiles, and then they lowered the sick man on his mat down into the crowd right in front of Jesus. Seeing their faith, Jesus said to the man, Young man, man, your sins are forgiven. But the Pharisees and teachers of religious law said to him themselves, Who does this he think he is? That's blasphemy. Only God can forgive sins. Jesus knew what they were thinking. So he asked them, Why do you question this in your hearts? Is it easier to say your sins are forgiven or stand up and walk? So I will prove to you that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. Then Jesus turned to the paralysed man and said, Stand up, pick up your mat and go home. And immediately, as everyone watched, the man jumped up, picked up his mat and went home praising God. Everyone was gripped with wonder and awe and they praised God, exclaiming, We have seen amazing things today. And yes, they had absolutely Brilliant. This morning I want to begin a little mini-series on the kind of things that can happen when people encounter Jesus. Specifically, I want to look at a few passages where people were brought to Jesus. Just a, just a few, uh, just a three or four weeks worth or so. And I remember the first time that uh, we had a guest speaker, a guy called Aaron Partington, come to preach in the church. Uh, came a couple of times, uh, some of you will remember him. Um, those who don't, he, was, he is the pastor of our church in Bevington, and at the time when he came, he was our area leader, and he was a member of uh, our fellowship's national leadership team. And he preached a great word, I remember, but he also talked uh, as an aside about the story that we've just read. And he talked about how we should think about bringing people to church instead of just inviting them to church. And that was something that he was uh, centering on very much in his own church. So over the course of the next few weeks, I want to comment on a few of the cases where people were brought to Jesus and see what happened. Because as I look through the Gospel, I see, I think, that there are at least 18 occasions where the word brought is used, meaning bringing people to Jesus. Sometimes it's crowds of people bringing their sick. Sometimes it's just an individual bringing a friend to Jesus because they need help. And there are lots of other uh, examples of when that happened, when the word brought itself is not actually used. In fact, I suspect I might only be scratching the surface uh, a man called Dr. J. Wilbur Chapman, who's a famous evangelist, said that the New Testament records tell of 40 people who were healed by Jesus. On this nu of this number, these 40 that he's talking about, 34 were either brought to Jesus by friends or he was taken to them. Okay, In only six cases out of that 40 did the sufferers find their way to Jesus without any kind of assistance. And uh, that's a real, a real thought, isn't it? Now, this series obviously relates to our, uh, our value of witness. And we are, particularly as we begin uh, the year, in the first part of the year, talking very much about our values. And we want our church to be a church 
that he's a church of witness. And we want each individual to carry this heart and this desire to share the love of God and share their experiences of Jesus with others. And yes, here we are again, talking about those values. You're going to hear them in your sleep, but we make no apologies for that. We won't always talk about, um, about our values. We will preach on other things. We will talk about other subjects, but you will hear us talking about these things a lot as we are seeking to uh, ground them in again, in a fresh and a new way, into our culture as a church. Now that said, said we make no apologies, but it is worth saying that of course I recognise just how weird it might seem for me to be talking about bringing people at a time like this. Here we are in lockdown, we couldn't bring somebody if we wanted to. We're not even supposed to go and see them. We're not even supposed to have contact with them. How on earth are we supposed to bring people to Jesus? Certainly, how on earth are we supposed to bring people to church? And anyway, isn't it better at this point in time to be talking about something like hope and all of those kind of things? Wouldn't that fit much more into the sea in the season that we're in? Well, keep listening, and I hope you will see that there is a lot of hope in what I'm saying. There's a lot of truth hope in what I'm going to share with you today. But here's what I'm thinking about sharing about this bringing thing. First of all, while we do want to talk about bringing people to church, we do want that to be an obvious um, application of what we're talking about. It does need to be said that Bringing people to church and bringing people to Jesus are not necessarily the same thing. In fact, to bring somebody to church is just one part of bringing someone to Jesus. There are a lot of other facets as well. It's more about us sharing God's love with people in any way that we can. It's about us being a witness and talking about what we know. It's about making Jesus a big part of our uh, connection to people and our response to people. So as you are talking to people on the phone and as you are hearing, getting messages from them, uh, you can continue, you can offer and say, hey, can I pray with you? Can I, can I, can I encourage you? Can I, can I find a way of helping you? It all means something. And while, of course, we can't bring people to church, we still can invite them. We can invite people, if they've got social media, to watch the services. We can share the videos and the posts that the church has. Second thing that I'm thinking is this, that the church may be closed, closed, but our witness continues. In fact, our witness needs to continue. In fact, never perhaps... uh, Is there a time when it's more necessary for us to continue to share this message? As people are struggling with hope, and as people are struggling with fear, and they're concerned about their health, and their jobs, and their livelihood, and their futures, and and, and things like that. And actually, of course, we are very mindful, aren't we? And we will be praying about, uh, and we should have included it in our prayers. Let's do that a little bit later on. We should be praying Uh, We're very mindful that there was a knife attack in our very own community. Um, This, in fact, let's pray about that right now, shall we? Father God, we do pray for those that are feeling fearful and worried, and particularly we pray for this person that was attacked, and for, for for the family, Father, and for those that have been deeply affected by it. That your peace and your love and your compassion and your grace will be upon them. In Jesus' name. We know how much this has affected our community. So will you, by your spirit, be here in such a powerful way, Lord God, as the comfort, the fears, and the the anxieties of people. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So we're living in a time when people are worried, where people are anxious, where people are fearful, where people are struggling to get a sense of the meaning of life and our witness must continue. We must be, we may be apart from people but our connection can continue. Think social media uh, and uh, again and 
get or think about giving someone a phone call or a video call if you've got the means to do that and, or sending them a card or something that will just uh, connect with them and say, hey, I'm thinking of you. I'm here for you. It's not necessarily so we can blast them with the gospel. I have phoned you up today to tell you the four points of salvation. You know, it's, it's not that, but it's about connecting with people, sharing a friendship, saying I'm here for you, I'm thinking of you, and I love you. And then the third thing that I'm thinking as I'm sharing this series is that this thing's not going to last forever. Might feel like it is sometimes, but you know, there will come a time when COVID-19 is behind us where we thank God for this vaccine that's going to uh, make such a difference. And we, we thank God that he is at work in the midst of this. And, and we will move past this. There is a light at the end of the tunnel and we are moving towards it. However much we're having to put up with now. And hey, that means that we can hit the ground running when the time comes, can't we? If we're impassioned and inspired and yeah, let's do this, then we'll be ready to go. So that's the third thing that I'm thinking. So let's now take a look at our first, first example of someone who was brought to Jesus and what happened to him. This story that we've read is, uh, is found in all three of what we call the synoptic, synoptic Gospels. Matthew, Mark and Luke. Called that because they're similar and because it's very likely that they, it's, they shared information between the three of them. One used uh, the other as... Um, uh, as a kind of a reference and stuff like that. Matthew doesn't mention being let, the guy being let down from the roof, but it's clearly the same story. And the man, we see that in, in all three, we see that the man had friends, we think there were four friends, who believed that Jesus could make a difference in their friend's life. They believed it to the point that they took some pretty extreme steps to get him to Jesus. You see, they understood something that is absolutely key, and that is that it is Jesus who makes the real difference. Whatever people do, whatever we might do, whatever strategies people might put in place, or whatever good those things might do, we know that it is Jesus that is what people really need. The Bible makes it very clear that he is the one that makes the difference. He is the one that brings the change. We're not told that he is the bread of life. Uh, in other words, the very basic thing that we need for our lives. And bread really was basic at the time that Jesus introduced himself as that. It could be the difference between uh, having food and starving. But he makes the difference. He makes the difference when we're suffering. He makes the difference to our purpose in life. Telling us in John 15 that he's appointed us to bear fruit. He makes the difference to our sense of peace in life. In fact, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 14 tells us that he is our peace. He makes a difference in terms of how we live and in terms of our forgiveness of sins. Philippians 3 9 says, in, through Christ, through faith in Christ, the righteousness of God. Righteousness is being right with God, being in, our, in the right place with him. And we don't have that by ourselves, but through Jesus, the righteousness of God gets transferred onto us and we stand in the presence of God, completely acceptable, completely forgiven of our sins. And of course, he makes the difference even in death. 1 Corinthians 15, 54 tells us that death has been swallowed up in his victory on the cross. How absolutely brilliant. And over the course of this series... I want us to see that it is Jesus who makes the real difference to people's lives. If only we can bring others to him. But it's interesting. So these guys were absolutely, um, absolutely confident that Jesus could do something for their friend. They knew absolutely that he would make a difference in their lives. They had to get him to Jesus. But what they wanted him to do, of course, was very different. To what Jesus saw his first need was. Those guys, they wanted Jesus to heal their friends. But when Jesus looked at the man, he knew that his biggest need, the thing that he needed more than anything else in the world, was God's forgiveness. It's interesting we see three things out of that, you know. First of all, that as well as being the answer and the one who makes the difference, 
He is also the one who knows what we really need. He's the one. So when we bring people to Jesus, we are bringing them to encounter the one who understands their most basic needs right deep down inside, in places that no person perhaps could ever see, unless it was shared. Secondly, he does more than we could ever imagine. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 tells us, Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than we could, all we could ask or imagine according to his power at work within us. The, desire, the, the friends brought this man to Jesus thinking he'll be able to do this thing for our friend. And it was a pretty big deal thing. But actually Jesus did much more than that. Jesus did more than they could ever comprehend. And to bring people to Jesus is to expose them to the one who can do more for them than we could ever dream of. In fact, that's the other reason that we're sharing this seemingly ridiculous series at a time when we can't possibly think about physically bringing people anywhere. It's because not only is it the people that we bring to Jesus that can experience him doing immeasurably more in their lives, when we come to Jesus, when we come into his presence, when we seek his face and when we feed upon him, he does immeasurably more in our lives too. He does these things in our lives too. If we talk about what he can do for anyone that we bring to him, we know that he does those same things for us as well. If we come into his presence and if we ask him. Maybe not in the way that we expect him to. May not be, it wasn't the way that these guys expected Jesus to meet this man's needs. But he did exactly what was necessary. And he'll do exactly what's necessary for us if we trust him and if we hold on to him. He'll allow things to happen, sure he will. But he'll carry, it th carry us through and make us stronger as a result. Thirdly, third thing that we learn from this understanding of what Jesus knew about this man is that our greatest issue at the end of the day is our sin. It's our wrongdoing. It's the fact that each of us, the Bible says all of us have sinned and fallen short of God's glory. To sin is to miss the mark. We've, we've missed God's standard. We've missed what it was all supposed to be about. And what this man received when these four friends, if it was four friends, brought him to Jesus was forgiveness from his sins and a restored right relationship with God. And I wanted to tell you, he also received a powerful confirmation of the truth of that forgiveness when he was then physically healed. You might say, actually, that Jesus gave the man a sort of a whole person thing, whole person touch and ministry. Now, of course, the reason that he healed the man wasn't so much to give him an assurance that his sins were forgiven, it was more as a message really to the Pharisees and the teachers of the law. They were saying, hey, who does this guy think he is? He's, he's, he's blaspheming, only God can forgive sins. He's making himself out to be God. And Jesus was saying, saying, oh, okay, I'll show you that I can do this. And he healed the man. But, um, and because it was a message to the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, maybe that's, that gives us a, a picture of why not all Christians do get healed. Um, and that's something we grapple with. But one thing is for sure that it must have been, a, it would have been a real assurance for this man as well. To have been told by Jesus, your sins are forgiven and then, and then healed and able to walk again. Must have said, yeah, whatever this guy's done for me in my life is going to stand secure and going to stand firm. And we can have an assurance that our forgiveness is complete and is secure. His word tells us that we are brand new people. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. We've been told that we've been brought by his precious blood. So now we are his treasured possession. We've been told that we've been taken from darkness into light. So we're in a completely different place than the place that we were in before. We can have a real assurance of the truth of this forgiveness that he gives us. Because he's planted our feet upon a rock. There was an Indian Christian who was asked what God had done for him. He picked up some dry leaves and he 
form them into a circle. And he got hold of a worm and he put a worm right in the middle of the circle of leaves and he set fire to the leaves. And as the flames began to move closer and closer to the worm, he simply reached in, picked the worm out and put it on a rock and said, that's what Jesus has done for me. He's lifted us out of the pit. He's put us on a rock. And that rock is secure. And that rock is firm. And that rock is unmovable. And whatever is shaking in our world today, you can be certain that the God and his word remains secure forever. And his forgiveness remains secure forever. Of course, it wasn't just the paralysed man that was affected by him being brought to Jesus. The four friends would have been affected too. But actually, verse 26 tells us that everyone was amazed and praised God. Everyone was amazed and praised God. When someone is brought to Jesus, there is a potential for multiple lives to be affected. Verse 20 also tells us something else actually quite amazing. It says this, when Jesus saw their faith, he said, friends, your sin, sins are forgiven. Can you see that this all happened, at least in part, because of the faith of the friends? Because they had faith. In response to their faith. That's not to say that everyone we believe is going to be saved necessarily will be. I, I guess it's, it's, that's a very big thing to say. But one thing is certain that God can do amazing things in response to our exercised faith. How do we exercise our faith? Well, these guys, they exercise their faith by bringing their friend to Jesus. So how do we do that? Particularly at this time that we talked, uh, where that we've already say, said we get it, how ridiculous seeming it is that we're talking about bringing at a time like this. Well, ultimately, we do look forward to a time when we can freely invite, freely bring people to church, freely witness. When we've moved on from this, as we, we know we are going to do, we look forward to that time. In the meantime, however, we need to get a bit creative. And in the meantime, we need to do what we can. What we can responsibly, safely and reasonably do. What can we do? Well, we can pray. Prayer is not the least that we can do. Prayer is the most that we can do. You know, when, it, when, when we tend to say, don't we, all we can do is pray, we don't realise what a big statement that actually is. We don't realise that by getting God involved into the situation through our prayers, we're doing the most that we ever could. And I would really love to think that people... Uh, people in our church, we, we would be thinking about identifying just a few people this year and really seeking to pray for them. People who don't know Jesus and really seeking, Jesus, reveal yourself to them. Jesus, help me to reveal you to them. And really sort of seeking. I think that would be a great thing to be doing in 2021 because, you know, we can bring people to Jesus in prayer. It's great. Secondly, the thing that we can do is to connect. Now, we can't connect physically, we've said that, but by being with someone in whatever way we possibly can, through social media, through a text, through a card, through a phone call, we can become a conduit of his grace. It's all about showing God's love to people by loving them. And if we can show people that they matter to us, if we can show people that we haven't forgotten them, if we can show people that we're there for them, then who knows what God can do. And of course we can share and we can invite. Find a way to get that message out. We can share, uh, invite people to watch um, our services. We can, we can talk about our services when we can. To, you know, when we connect with people, we can, we can share those videos and those posts as we've We've talked about, we'd love you to be doing that if you've got the capacity to do it. 
But let's be a people that seek in any way that we can to bring people to Jesus. We're not talking about ignoring lockdown rules. We're not talking about going ahead and doing stuff anyway because we want to. We, we're talking about working within the framework because you know something? God is much bigger than this framework. He's quite able to, to still meet with people. He's still able to still do his work. He's still quite able to build his kingdom through us if we trust him and if we seek him. And I want to talk, of course, to those that are watching this live stream and you don't know Jesus. And you've never come to a place um, where you've accepted Jesus into your life. And I hope you haven't felt uncomfortable listening to this. But we, you know, when we talked about bringing people to Jesus, we're talking about you, really. Because we want you to encounter all that Jesus can do for you. We want you to know that he can do far more in your life than you can ever imagine. We want you to know that he can do, um, that he knows the very basic needs of your life. We want you to know that the best thing that you can possibly receive is your sins forgiven and a right relationship with God. And so right now I want to give you an opportunity of getting all of that. And all you have to do is repeat this simple prayer and mean it. Father God, pray with me. Father God, thank you that Jesus came to die for me. Thank you that Jesus can make the real difference in my life. Thank you that when I put my trust in him, my whole life can be transformed and made new. Thank you that he will never leave me. He will never let me down. He will never turn away from me. But he will establish his plans and purposes in my life and make me fruitful and successful in him and Lord today I give you my life I hand my life over to you and I say forgive me of my sins in Jesus name Amen Amen, Amen. as always I take it that the, there is a number on the screen and an email on the screen yep uh, Alan's nodding at me and telling me that that's the case and if you prayed that prayer and I trust there are people that have prayed that prayer, then don't just leave it at that. We are, we've now begun a journey. and You've now begun a journey of knowing Jesus more and more. And we can help you with that if you get in touch with us. Best thing to do, use the telephone number. Give us a call, send us a text or WhatsApp, whatever it is, um, and just say, I made that decision to follow Jesus today. You can, of course, send the email. Uh, that'll work just as well. You can leave a message in the comments, but uh, the problem is that if you're not watching this live, um, then we may not actually um, get to, uh, you know, we might miss your comments if it's at some later point in time. We do check it straight after uh, the first time that it, that it happens, but you, you know what I mean. So please get in touch. Um, those who have prayed that prayer, made that decision, Jesus will be with you forever. And uh, now that you've done that, and we really want to help you to grow in that. Fantastic. Let's pray, shall we? Father God, we want to thank you for the difference that you can make in people's lives. Thank you that when people meet you, it changes them. And it changes their whole lives. That's our testimony. That's our story, how you've changed our lives, Lord God. You've done so much for us that we want others to know that too. And we pray in Jesus' name that you would help us in whatever way, uh, we, way we can in this ridiculous time, um, in this crazy time, in this tragic time, to share your love and to share your message of hope with those around us. Help us to share what you've done for us. Most of all, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Absolutely brilliant to, uh, to do church with you guys today, either here or on the live stream. It's just great to meet with you, or if you're watching this video at a later time as well, thank you so much for, for being with us. 
We are going to have one last song that we're going to listen to here. You can sing along to at home as we worship uh, one more time and uh, before we, uh, we close our service. For those that you are here, normal ways, the offering baskets are out, out in the foyer as you go out for those that are going to be looking for those. Okay, but let's worship together. Um, as we move towards the end of our service. Thanks, guys. The heavens declare the glory of God and quick notices um, before we say the grace together. Um, you had your notice sheets um, sent out by email. Uh, I trust there are a couple of copies uh, out there in the foyer for those that don't have those um, that you can take. Um, but the two things particularly that I just want to uh, remind people of is that we have coffee time straight after our service today on Zoom and the link has been sent. Um, and uh, so join us with that if you're able to and also just to remind uh, fo folk involved that we have a house group leaders meeting stroke brainstorm happening this evening um, I believe at seven o'clock but the uh, again the is happening on zoom and the link has been sent to you and uh, if you need that link again by all means get in touch with me and I can sort that out but I uh, look forward to seeing you guys there today as we talk about um, house groups and, uh, and where they're going to go over the course of the new year. Fantastic. Well, let's say the grace together. 
May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. Thanks so much for joining us. Those of you who've, who are here uh, at the church, those of you who are on live stream, it's great to get together and enjoy church together. God bless you. Take care. Bye. Can I just say to folks, please um, don't have...